Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, January 18th, 2024. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday between 7 and 10 p.m. Pacific Time. This is episode 789 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, Sword and Fairy 4 premieres, plus the billing controversy behind it. Lavenders confirms its premiere date. Yu Cheng accuses an actress of leaving him hanging. Was it Ban Bijou? And celebrity videos featuring Dylan Wang, Zhao Lusi, and Xiao Zhan. But first, I have a quick announcement to make. This Sunday's video will be the last before I go on a family vacation. We've gotten quite a bit of snow here recently, and while JJ loves playing in it, we will be trading it for sunny Vietnam next week. We will be there for about a month. It'll be our first travel vacation since 2019. There was the pandemic, and then JJ came along, so we haven't been able to travel at all even though we'd love to. This will be our first time traveling with a baby, so we are excited but also a little bit apprehensive. Anyway, my next video will most likely be next Sunday if I'm not too busy, and I'll be bringing it to you guys from Vietnam. Okay, on with the show, here is what's recently premiered, two dramas for today and yesterday. First, there's Sword and Fairy 4 starring Zhu Jingyi and Chen Zhiyuan. The Xianxia drama premiered yesterday, January 17th. According to Ai Qiyi, in the drama, Chen Zhiyuan is Yun Tianhe, son of a couple of disciples from the Qionghua sect. One day, Yun Tianhe runs into Han Lingxia, played by Zhu Jingyi, a young lady who breaks into his parents' tomb. Together, they go in search of his parents' past. 19 years ago, the Qionghua sect trapped the demon realm and seized spiritual power. Sword and Fairy 4 is slated for 40 episodes, and it's available on Ai Qiyi with English subs. A big segue here, Sword and Fairy 4 did not share any official character posters or anything like that until the drama aired, and then all the promo materials came out. The speculated reason for this was that it had to do with the star's billing order. The rumor at one point was that contractually, Chu Jingyi was supposed to be first billed, but because Chen Zhiyuan experienced a surge of popularity after Hit and Love, production wanted to put him first billed. This led to online mudslinging and war of words between fans of both sides. The final outcome was this. The official announcement went with Chu Jingyi and Chen Zhiyuan, names in no particular order. Shortly after this announcement, Chu Jingyi's studio took to Weibo with a statement to explain their side of the story. They wrote that in the contract they signed, Chu Jingyi was to get a single card credit, meaning her name would appear in a frame with no one else's, and she was to be built first before any other actor. They added, quote, The drama's official announcement did not respect the stipulations in the contract, which is incomprehensible, unquote. Shortly after that, Chen Zhiyuan's agency came out with a statement of their own. They wrote that in the contract they signed, the lead male and female names were to be in alternating and no particular order. They warned against the spreading of rumors such as snatching away top billing, capital support, and deliberately ripping up billing order. All this drama and the drama has just started. One has to wonder how or if it'll affect the show. They did share this poster earlier today to announce breaking 7,500 popularity points in just 24 hours on Yuku. Perhaps it's drawn viewers to the show. Back to drama premieres now. Other than competition between lead actors, there's also competition in the form of another sword and fairy drama. This one's simply titled Sword and Fairy. While Sword and Fairy 4 is on Aichi, Sword and Fairy is on Tencent. This one stars Xu Kai and Esther Yu, no billing order controversy here as far as I know, and premiered earlier today. According to Baidu, in the drama, Xu Kai and Esther Yu are a couple of youngsters who travel together in the world, hoping to retrieve their past memories. In the midst of it, they get involved in mysterious events such as the rebellion of the Risen Soul sect. Sword and Fairy is slated for 36 episodes and is available on Wii TV with English subs. 
Now then, if you're a little confused about the two sword and fairies, let me try to clear it up. And I've mentioned this before, so those of you who have heard it, do bear with me, as I think it's worth re-mentioning for those who haven't. Sword and Fairy 4 and Sword and Fairy are also known as Chinese Paladin 4 and 6 respectively. The Chinese Paladin franchise is based on an RPG game called The Legend of Sword and Fairy. The very first installment came out in 2005 and starred Hookah and Crystal Liu and was a huge hit. It inspired a sequel, but because the producers felt that the third game had a much stronger story than the second, they skipped part 2 and made Chinese Paladin 3 starring Hookah and Yang Mi. It also turned out to be a huge hit. So now, Chinese Paladin 4, also known as Sword and Fairy 4, with Chu Jingyi and Chen Zhiyuan, names in no particular order, premiered yesterday. Chinese Paladin 5 came out in 2016, that one stars Elvis Han and Guli Naja. Then there's Chinese Paladin 6, also known as Sword and Fairy, with Xu Kai and Esther Yu, that premiered earlier today. On top of everything, there's a Chinese Paladin remake in the works. This is a remake of the original starring Hukka and Crystal Liu. It's called Paladin Legend and stars relative newcomers He Yu and Yang Yutong. So basically, 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6 have been made and aired, 2 was skipped, and now there's a remake of the original in the works. Okay, a couple more premiere updates before we move on. Golden House Hidden Love is an upcoming modern drama starring Lai Meiyun and Wang Zihao. It's confirmed to premiere tomorrow, January 19th. According to Ai Chi, in the drama, Lai Meiyun is a girl who buys an old mansion by the sea. On the first night of moving in, she meets Wang Zihao's character, a man who claims to have lived in the mansion for a thousand years and is there waiting for someone. After several unsuccessful attempts to kick him out, she is forced to hide him in order to protect her old mansion which she has been working hard to pay off. Golden House Hidden Love is slated for 24 episodes and will stream on iQIYI. And lastly, for premiere updates, Love Endures with Yang Zi and Fan Chengcheng has confirmed a January 20th premiere. Here is one of their recent posters to announce the premiere date and also to announce breaking 3 million reservations on Yuku. I spoke about this drama in detail in my last video. I'll update on where to watch with English subs in my next. And that's it for drama updates. Before we get to celebrity updates, just to say that this show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoy the content, do like and subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell button for notifications. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to parts like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. Celebrity updates now, and today we begin with an apparent spat between writer-producer Yu Cheng and actress Ban Bi Zhu. Yu Cheng is about to start filming a new costume drama titled Perfect Match. This is the first art poster they've shared. On January 13th, the outspoken producer did a three-hour livestream on Weibo, in which he brought along some stars in makeup and costume to talk about the drama. Here is Wang Xingyue, the male lead. The two female leads are Lu Xiao and Betty Wu, but word on Weibo is that at one point, Bambi Zhu had been earmarked for Betty's role. Apparently, Bambi pulled out last second, and Yu Cheng had to get Betty to fill in. In the live stream, Yu Cheng took the chance to speak to this. Quote, this time, a certain actress was very, very enthusiastic, said she loved the script and didn't care about billing position. At the time, I had not decided on the first female lead, but eventually said, okay, this actress is pretty, she's a good actor, why not give her a chance? She had even said that she rejected a first female lead on a different project. But later on, I don't know why, she decided to go back to that project and I was left with an actor short right before we're about to begin filming. On top of that, this screenshot of a chat between Yu Cheng and Wan Royao of Jaywalk Studio, which represents Bambi, started making the rounds on Weibo. Yu Cheng basically calls out the actress for reneging on a verbal agreement and saying that she lacked character and trustworthiness. Seemingly not wanting to offend Yu Cheng, Royao apologized. She explained that the opportunity to play a first female lead got to this actress's head and that they too were angry at her. What do you guys think? Assuming this is Bambi, and at this point I think it's more likely than not, 
was it wrong of her to pull out last minute when they had a verbal agreement? Or was it a case of, hey, we didn't sign anything. It's business. If you really wanted me, you should have offered me a contract. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section below. Lastly, now for celebrity updates, here are some videos I came across recently, thought I'd share. This first one, shared on January 15th, is hashtagged, when Wang Hethi arrives in Paris, he becomes Dylan, and Dylan Wang's popularity at Paris airport. In my last video, I shared a clip of Dylan at a departure gate at the airport in China. This is a continuation of that, his arrival in Paris. In the video, the 25-year-old actor is seen emerging from the arrival gate in his toque, mask, and glasses. In the background, we can hear someone speaking in English, the first left, all the way to the left, and a few other fans yelling Dylan in English as well. The next video is one of Cao Lusi on the set of her latest drama, The Legend of Jewelry. Shared on January 16th, it's hashtagged Cao Lusi's eyes in The Legend of Jewelry. In the video, the 25-year-old actress is in costume and is being filmed in front of a blue screen with other actors around her. Her expression looks like one of concern or uneasiness, and she only breaks into a smile when they yell cut. Lastly, for celebrity videos, here's Xiao Chan in a live stream for leaning. Shared on January 15th, this one is simply hashtagged Xiao Chan Red Cardigan Sweater. In the video, the 32-year-old actor, who is a spokesperson for the leaning brand, explains that something black and white and sporty looks fitting for men, and proceeds to gift a couple of sweaters to the host of the live stream. He also sits down to a New Year dinner and serves food to the kids at the table. On that note, it's Thursday today, so time for another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. As you guys know, every Sunday we do the top 10 Chinese web and TV dramas of the week. In this segment, I give some of my thoughts and predictions as to who the champions will be. To recap, last week's top web drama was The Last Immortal starring Zhao Lusi and Wang Anyu. And the top TV drama was Blossoms Shanghai starring Huke and Ma Yili. After 4 weeks as champion, I think The Last Immortal will finally be dethroned. It'll be a good tussle between Frozen Surface and my boss, but ultimately, I think my boss will take a slim victory. And I'm backing Blossom Shanghai to retain its title, so that's my boss and Blossom Shanghai to be champions this week. What do you guys think? And that's been another segment of my predictions for this Sunday's Top 10 Champions. It also brings us to the end of this episode. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys Sunday. As always, stay safe, and I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.